Alrighty, welcome back boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shank, coming to you live from Alameda International High School. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about some functions and specifically some function notation. How to read those, how to plug them, how to solve for them, how to evaluate those linear functions. So, let's start us off. Some function notation just kind of looks like this. We have f x and a lot of people will try to read it off as if it is a tv station or they would say f times x or f parentheses x make sure that you're saying f of x is read as the value of f at the point x or f of x i also have uh, f with respect to x several ways to be able to say that. And all you're saying is this, it's just a function. F is a function of X. The reason why that works is because we're saying, okay, for example, the one that they gave in this nice little picture for us, and we'll do more here in a second, just says F of X is equal to negative three X plus five. So that's that linear function that we're talking about. And then it says, given this, find F of two. So find your output when x equals 2. You would plug in that var value for your var variable and you would simplify. Again, other letters can be used instead of f. You can have g of x, h of x, or more simply, you can use your letter y. So remember that anytime it says f of x, it is the same thing as writing y. So when you have a function, for example, f of x equals 3x plus 11, you can say it is a linear function that is equivalent to y equals 3x plus 11. You can rewrite it either way. And so underneath of that it says when we evaluate a function, we are looking for the output value or the value of y for a function when we are given an input value or a value for x. So that's what that's talking about. We're saying, okay, if we're given an x, find what the output is. And remember, always follow those order operations. So again, to recap on this order operation, I like to write a little staircase and it has those uh, letters that are in there as well. So that way you can take you know one step at a time. So we're saying the G stands for those grouping symbols. It can be any of those that are in there. E stands for exponents. M and D stand for multiplication division. Make sure it isn't in that order, it is whatever comes left to right first. And then lastly, you would work on addition and subtraction left to right. So just kind of, if you need to draw that staircase for yourself, that way you have that order of operations, you can use it at any time. So in that first example, it says if f of x is equal to 3x minus 7, then evaluate the following values. So it's giving you your function, your linear function. You can plug it in on your calculator, see what it looks like, but we're saying, what is the output when x equals eight? And so we're gonna say, all right, well, uh, like a charger, just plug it in. So we're gonna say, I'm gonna take eight, and wherever I have an x, I now have an eight. So I'm going to plug it into my function. So I let x equal eight, I have f of 8 is equal to 3 times 8 minus 7. And so we're going to use that order oper operations to simplify. And so I have 3 times 8 is 24, quick math, minus 7 is going to be 17. So now, what did I just find? How can I check? Well, always check with the calculator. So I'm going to say, all right, let me pull up my trusty calculator. And so we're saying this. I can do it a couple different ways. I can type it in exactly as it looks, or I can use this wonderful function like this. I can hit the store button in the bottom left. So I'm gonna say I want to take my value eight, and I'm going to store it into x. So I'm letting x equal eight. All right, so it's stored. And now it's saying, okay, let's type out our function. So we have three, x and then we have minus seven hit enter and it gives you your output so it's saying okay my output is 17 and i'll go back to this in just a second as well so let me hit uh, 
that clear and move on to the next problem. So now for our part B of that example one, it says find f of negative four. Same steps, just like before. I'm gonna let x equal negative four. Wherever I have an x, I now have a negative four. So I have f of negative four is equal to three times negative four minus seven. Notice how the uh, values in black, they did not change because that is our function. However, the value in blue, we choose what that value of x is going to be. We put into the oven our x value. So we simplify, so we have three times a negative four is negative 12 minus seven. Simplify one more time, we get negative 19. Be sure to check using that wonderful calculator as well. So I'm gonna do the exact same steps that I did. So let me hit clear just one more time. So we're saying I'm going to say negative four. I need to store that into x. I hit enter, it's stored. And now I have my function, I have uh, three X, still minus seven. Could have typed that in uh, or left it typed in for me four, but I like to be careful, I do that. And our output is going to be negative 19. And you're probably asking, you know, hopefully you're asking, well, what did we just find? What the F did we just find? Well, we found these two things. We found our first value F of eight, equals 17 and f of negative 4 equals 19 but what what does that mean we're saying okay the function at the point 8 is equal to 17 and the function at the point negative 4 is negative 19 more importantly we can remember that this creates an order pair on a graph again you need that x and y just need, like you need a left and a right sock you need an x value and a y value to make an order pair. And so I have for part A, my order pair is eight, 17, and my order pair for part B is negative uh, four, negative 19. And so I can use these points and to show that they're also on that line of our function. And so how do I do that? Well, let's uh, hit clear one last time. And what I wanna do is this, I wanna go ahead and hit that plot button y equals because it's still the same thing f of x is the same thing as saying y so I'm gonna plot out my function and see what it looks like so I have 3 x and I have minus 7 hit enter and I can hit that graph button it gives us a graph again you can always trace and move around on it but what I want to do is this I want to hit that second and then I want to hit second and then table now this is an extremely valuable function of our calculator because we're saying okay hey here's our function that we used we said we had three x minus seven and I'm saying here's my table of values so we didn't have this before but now we do so we're saying okay I'll double check I have when x equals eight my function is equal to 17 and you don't see any negative numbers, that's okay. I can scroll up and say, hey, when x equals negative four, my y value is negative 19. And it keeps going on and on. Again, I have all those different values. Let me scroll, there we go. I have all these different values for our x. And I can choose what the rx is to find out what our output for y is. So it's a very powerful tool. Again, I did, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Gotta be careful there. So I did second, and then I did table. So I did second graph to get this table. All right, so now, gotta stay hydrated. <clears throat> All right, so it says this, it says when we are solving a function, we are looking for the x values when given a value of y. These problems are just like your multi-step equations. So when you see these, make sure that you can very simply have for yourself. Again, I know how to unwrap a present. You don't add more wrapping paper on it. You want to use those inverse operations to undo what was given. So anytime you're given an equation, you're trying to solve 
for that value of x or whatever the variable is. You're trying to find out what is inside that present. And so now, let me make sure I have this here. So now, after that, I like to share this clip with people. That way it's a, another way to understand how inverse operation looks. So when I'm solving an equation, whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. But since we're talking about inverse operations, that's why the clip is playing like this. So again, watch this over a couple times, try to make that connection for yourself. We're undoing what has been done. <clears throat> All right. So now, on example two, it says if f of x is equal to 2x plus 9, then solve for the following values. So what we're doing is this. We're saying, okay, now given that our function is equal to 15, what value do I need to have for x for my function to be 15? This is basically using that uh, oven reference again, or analogy again. I'm saying, okay, went over to someone's house, had some muy puento enchiladas they said hey what is inside these how do you make them and so that's what we're trying to figure out so how do we do that well we we can set these equal to each other i'm going to set my function 2x plus 9 equal to 15 and i'm going to now solve that equation so now i'm going to use my inverse operations whatever do to one side do to the other again i draw i like to draw these uh the whole way down that way I have two sides of my equation. And so on the left, I need to get rid of everything except for x. So how do I do that? Well, I take one layer off at a time. And I subtract nine from both sides. On the left side, I have two x. On the right side, I have positive six. It always tells you what to divide by. You always divide by the coefficient. And so whatever value is attached to the x, meaning whatever is being multiplied by the x, you have to do the inverse. So we are going to divide by that two. So I'm going to divide both sides by two and I have x equals three. So now we're saying, okay, at the point three, our function equals 15. So if you wanted to, you could say, you know, I have an order pair of three, 15 for this graph. And then for part B, it's saying, okay, same function. 2x plus 9, when does that equal negative 8? So I said that these equal to each other once again. Use those inverse operations to solve for your variable. I have on the left side 2x. On the right side, I have negative 17. Again, make sure you're bringing down that equal sign. Unless it's an inequality, then you have to be even more careful. So then divide both sides by 2. I get x equals a negative 8.5. So again, make sure you can, you know, double check these values. So let's see, maybe I can try to do this. So let's see if I can do this. Clear, bring that calculator back up. All right, we have our function. We have our function 2x, and then we have plus 9. Enter. And what I want to do, I don't even really need to look at it. I want to figure out what values work. So I said, okay, I had an output. Decimal values get a little tricky. Uh, you can set these up. So let's do, let's say, what was it? 15? I think it was the first one. Yeah. So it's saying, okay, when our output is 15, I have to go, okay, it's saying, hey, when y equals 15, what is my input? What is my value of x? Well, using my table and using that wonderful calculator, I'm saying my value for x is going to be three. Again, that works up just the way we did it, so we are good. And then I wanna double check on this one. But if you notice, I don't see any decimal values in these, in this table. So how can I change that? Well, pretty sure I should be able to hit second and then where it has table set. So I want to start it at, let's start it at negative 10. And we'll say, and then let me go back. So I have negative 10, if it will let me. But that's fine. And honestly, if you uh, need to start, you can always scroll up. But I'm going to say, all right, I'm gonna have each the change in each uh, point is going to be 
0.5. Enter. Hopefully now table. Uh, excellent. Okay. A little tricky at first, but it, it does it all right. So usually you can set uh, your initial start so that way you don't have to start at zero every time, but it's having a little trouble with that. But that's okay. We can go up to, I just hold it in, go up to negative 8.5. What is your, sorry, what is your output? We said negative eight. There we go. Had to make sure my output is negative eight. That means that my input, my x value is negative 8.5. All right. So I'm going to hit uh, clear and quit and move it on. So for that example number three, looks a little rough, but that's okay. We know what we're doing. So it says f of x is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus three. We have two scenarios. I'm going to do one at a time. So it says if we're given f of eight, then what would we do? Well, we just plug in a value for x and we simplify. So I'm gonna let x equal eight. So anywhere where I have an x, I now have an eight. So I have f of eight is equal to negative one fourth times eight plus three. That simplifies to negative two plus three. And then that is equal to one. So for this function, it's saying at the point x equals eight, my function would equal one. However, for option B, it's saying if we're given f of x equals eight, a little bit of a change there, then what do we do? Well, we're saying, okay, now we have to set these equal to each other and solve for, for x. So I set negative one fourth times x plus three equal to eight. Use your inverse operations to solve for your variable. And then I have on my left side, negative one fourth x equals five. This one's a tricky one. A lot of people got caught up on this. Since it's saying, hey, I have a fraction as my coefficient, I need to use my inverse operation. So I am multiplying by the reciprocal. So it, since it gives you division, you have to do the inverse. So I have to multiply by the inverse. Again, we're trying to get one x equals a value. So that's always our goal. And so I'm gonna say x equals negative 20. If you don't like using those fractions, if they're not your friends, they're mine, but you can at least change it to a decimal and just use a decimal value instead if you like using those for yourself. So now I can also do that. So let me move on to the next one. So I have, for example, four, a little bit of change here. If you notice, it says if f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 5, then what is f of negative 3? Well, you're probably hopefully saying that, hey, this isn't a linear function, but it's quadratic. It still works the same way. So that even though this is a quadratic function, we can still let x equal negative 3, plug it in wherever you have an x, you now have a negative 3. And so I'm saying, f of negative three is equal to, and so I have to be very mindful, make sure those values are in parentheses and keep everything else the same. So again, if you wanted to, you could write, you know, I could write something like this. I could say, I'm gonna try this out. I could say, when I'm writing it for the first time, I would have that, my whatever value squared minus two times the value plus Five. If you wanted to write it like that, you certainly could, and then you know fill in afterwards your negative three. That's how I like to do it when I'm writing it out. Whatever works for you works for me. So now we have to simplify. Use those order operations. I have my exponents, and so I do negative three squared is nine. Everything else stays the same. Then I can do multiplication, so I do negative two times negative three is six. And then I add those three values together to get 20. So for this function, when x equals negative three, my function, my quadratic function equals 20. And then lastly, it says if f of x is equal to x squared, then what would we do? Then what are the values of x given f of x equals 81? Notice that key part here, it says values. It doesn't say a single value of x, it's saying plural. So that means we're going to have more than one answer. And more specifically, I'm going to have two answers. So that is the key for these functions is you know exactly how many answers you should get. 
when you're looking at the degree of the function. And we'll talk about that later on. So set our equation up, I have x squared equals 81. Use those inverse operations. If I have x squared, that means I have to take the square root of both sides. And then I have x is equal to plus or minus nine. And so be careful on this because a lot of people just say nine and be done. Why do I need two answers? Well, I said my degree is two, so I need to have two answers that would make this a true statement. And so I'm saying this symbol right there, if you have you know plus and minus right on top of each other, it's just saying x is equal to nine or negative nine. And this works since uh, positive nine squared is the same as nine times nine, which is equals 81. And we have negative nine squared is equal to negative nine times negative nine, which is still positive 81. So be mindful and be careful of these values as you are working them out. And as always, super slam that subscribe button.